I didn't have to say no, did you? Amen. Amen. Good evening. Amen. It's good to see all of you tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. We'll welcome you back. We're so glad to see each and every one of you. And as we get started, as always, let me make a few announcements. Glad to see you this morning. And glad to be back this evening and remind you that we do have service Wednesday night back on our normal schedule. I hope that you had a great holiday week and enjoyed uh, being with your families and such as that. But don't forget we will have church on Wednesday night this week. And also don't forget uh, our Christmas food baskets uh, and our toy drive. If you want to bring in any toys, new or used, and also food. Uh, for those uh, needy, those in need for the Christmas holiday, please be doing that so we can see what we have as we get closer uh, to the holiday. You know what? It, it will be here before we know it. Amen. Uh, also, remind you about the women's ministry on Saturday, December the 8th. They would like to invite you out for a women's brunch from 10.30 to 2 p.m. And also, I didn't mention this this morning, but if you, <coughs> excuse me, have made any changes to your information and the directory, church director needs to be updated. Please see Sister Helen or Sister Amanda. <coughs> Excuse me. And don't forget about me praying for our Christmas play as they, they get underway. Praying for that December the 16th. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which will be two weeks away. And next Sunday night also, uh, we're going to have something special. Uh, sister Wendy and, and her sister and uh, the, her daughter will be back with us next Sunday night uh, for a special with singing and Christmas music. So y'all plan to be with us next <laughs> Y'all know they done a great job. Uh, she done a great job last, last time that they came. So they'll be coming this coming, this coming Sunday night, December the 2nd. At 2 p.m., so and, and I mean at 2 p.m., at 6 p.m. on December the 2nd, and I'm going to let them sing the whole hour next time. Y'all didn't want me to, y'all wanted them to keep singing last time, I'm going to let them sing next time. So y'all come and be prepared for them good singing and get some good Christmas music next Sunday night at 2 p.m. And also be praying for uh, Sister Nikki as they are, they're going to be working on this elegant evening with Esther. Um, they are in need of prom dresses, bridesmaids dresses. Uh, these are for the girls that are going to be, go, be, be a part of this where they'll have something. Some, we don't want to have to go out and buy something necessarily just for this, but it is just something to, um, just for them to enjoy. They're going to be doing some makeup and, and, and just, just several different things. There's something special for these young ladies, grades 6 through 12. If you'd like to help with that, donate something, please see uh, Sister Nikki. Uh, by January the 5th. So be praying for that. Amen? Yes, ma'am. I did offer her my old prom dress in 1971. She rejected it. She rejected a 1971 <laughs> prom dress. I, I'll be doggone. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> they might need to be a little bit more up to date than that. We were shown there. Amen? But thank you, <laughs> thank you for the offer, they said. They said they appreciate the offer. <laughs> thank you, <Spouse. laughs> Amen. But be remembering those things that are that are uh, up and coming. Amen. Don't, don't forget about that. But as we get started this evening, how about we go to the Lord in, in prayer? Uh, uh, as we get started, please be remembering those that are on our prayer list. And uh, Brother Donnie uh, Atkins had gone to see Brother Gene. Uh, Rothrock that is in the, the nursing home and he's going to be having some tests run tomorrow tomorrow at 10 o'clock and he asked especially for prayer for him uh, so please be remember Brother James and also we can, Sister May is here tonight she's been not able to be here for several weeks she's not able to be here for several weeks but she's able to be here tonight her brother Ted so y'all make sure you speak to her tonight I know she would be glad to see you amen but be remembering, brother, you know Milton Sellers, who used to be the pastor at Sardis Baptist Church, and then Lock Lord Baptist Church is is, uh, is just getting very weak and very low. So please be remembering his family uh, and during this time also. You know them personally and anybody else that's on our, our prayer list. But if nothing else tonight, how about we stand up and let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going we're gonna to have a special prayer also as we start for Brother Gene tonight. Just remember him. And those uh, others that are not with us and those that might be sick. So let's pray tonight. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus, and we want to thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, Father, for every soul, every person that's turned the cares of the world to the side to come into your house tonight, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth and to hear your word taught, Lord. So we just ask that we come together in one mind and one accord. We just invite the presence of the, of the Holy God into this house tonight. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and move and minister unto your people only as you can. You know their hearts. You know their minds. Father God, I don't, but you do. And I pray that you give me words tonight to say, God, that would truly uh, impact, encourage God. Draw them to the cross with every word that is said. Father, we also pray specifically for those in our church that have been sick. God, we ask for a special touch of healing on their lives. Lord, we pray for Brother Gene uh, Rothrock as he's going, Father, for this biopsy tomorrow. We pray right now that there will not be a cell of cancer in his yes. body, Lord. But God, those tests are going to come back clear. Clear, and we ask that you do a work, a, a miracle in his lungs and touch his breathing, Father God. We know right now you are the healer of every sickness and disease, including COPD. And we know that you can move in a mighty way in his life, God. Anybody else in this house tonight that's standing in the need for a touch, Lord, I pray tonight before they leave here, may the power of God fall on them, Lord, and uplift them and undergird them with your mighty right hand. We love you tonight, Jesus. We give you this service and this time together. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Come on up, brother. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I wonder if so many years like we were the same. I would let my bliss have been. Through the fire of my weakness, 
excuse me, Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 27. That's where we're going to tonight. I want to share with you this text as we get ready to preach this sermon. Simply keep the faith. Keep the faith is the title of my message tonight. Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 27. And if you're there, say amen. amen. When Jesus <laughs> departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? That is what he said to them. Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said, they replied to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, saying According to your faith, let it be unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. 
Let's stop right now and pray over the reading of God's Word. Father, we bow once again in your presence tonight, and we want to thank you, Lord, for the reading of your holy Word. We thank you, O Lord, for this Word tonight, that it is bread, God, for a hungry soul. And I ask that you would please help me to preach as I stand upon your word tonight to those that are hungry. And I pray, Lord God, that the words that I say, Lord, would bring nourishment and strength into their souls. If there's ones in here tonight that are weary, that are waiting upon you, Lord, I pray that this would be a word of encouragement and strength, that they would continue to keep the faith as they wait on you. We just ask you, God, to meet us in these hours in the next few minutes. We give you this service in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. This uh, passage of Scripture caught my attention this, this week, and I was just reading, uh, just reading through uh, the book of Matthew, and I came to this particular story here. And I don't know, sometimes, you know, as you read the Word of God, just God begins dealing with your heart on different matters and different things that you are reading. And I was looking at their, this story of these two men that they came to Jesus and they were asking Jesus, pleading with Jesus, if you will, to heal them. They wanted to be able to see. You know what? There's a lot of things in this uh, this world, I believe, that we take for granted. But I believe our sight would be probably one of the biggest things. Amen. I pray and I pray, Lord, that I never lose uh, my ability to see. Because I know what it's like. If I take my contacts out, I couldn't see any of you in here tonight. Amen. Thank God for glasses and contacts that we can see. I think sometimes we take for granted our sight. And if there's one uh, sense that I don't want to lose, it's my sight. And these men were pleading with the Lord that they would be healed. And the Bible says that uh, they were. He, or Jesus responded. He asked them this. He said, do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, was their response. And immediately, immediately right then, they were healed. Now, I know we've got a lot of examples throughout Scripture, and there are many examples in Scripture where the very same thing happened. Somebody approached Jesus, and in that moment, immediately they were healed. But I mean, this is what was on my mind. What, what about when we approach Jesus and we come before the throne of grace and we ask the Lord for something, but it's not immediate? What about when we have to wait? What about when we have to wait days, weeks, months, or even years before we hear or the Lord responds to something that we are asking or we are requesting? Do we have that same faith? Jesus asked them, do you believe that I have, do you believe that I am able to do this? If Jesus did it right then immediately, be one thing, but if we had to wait months or weeks and years do we still have that same faith that he's able to do it? Or with time does our faith begin to diminish just a little bit? Amen. Some of you in here tonight, maybe this is a word for you tonight. If you're waiting on the Lord to move in your life, and maybe God hasn't seemed to be responding to maybe your prayer, and you haven't heard God, you had not heard anything from him. And faith is beginning to wane, and faith is beginning to diminish, and hope is beginning to diminish, then this sermon is for you tonight. Have you ever been waiting on something, believing God for it, and you just knew something was about to change? You get up that morning, you're excited about it, today is going to be different. But then it isn't different. Every morning you wake up, well, today is going to be different. But then it isn't. Still no answer. Still no change. Still God remains silent. And in that time as it passes, expectation, expectancy begins to fade and hope begins to diminish. You know what? Just as there are many examples in the Word of God about how Jesus immediately healed somebody, there are also many examples in the Word of God that people had to wait on the Lord. And I'll probably say there's probably more waiting than immediate healing. Joseph, or let me say this about Abraham and Sarah, we know they probably they would probably get the award for waiting the longest, considering that they, Abraham was a hundred when he had his first child. I say he deserves an award, amen, for waiting on the Lord, even though there were some bumps along the way. We know that Joseph had to wait on God for 13 years as he went from the pit to the palace and then eventually made it unto the prison. 
We know that Job, and he is a picture of patience. We, we say the patience of Job all the time. He had to wait upon the Lord in the midst of great trial and tribulation. Remember Daniel. Daniel, after fervently praying unto the Lord, had to wait for 21 days for his answer to come. And the Word of God reveals unto us that there was a war or a battle going on in the spiritual realm. I want you to be reminded, I know that we live in the physical, but there is a spiritual realm, amen? Yeah. And many times we don't understand why things are delayed or things are put on hold, but it could be that the devil is doing everything that he could to stop that answer from reaching you, amen? Yeah. From you getting that breakthrough, the devil is surrounding you the best that he can to hinder the work of the Lord in your life. Don't forget that. Remember the women, the woman with the issue of blood. She waited 12 years for her healing. Mary and Martha had to wait four days on Jesus while their brother laid lifeless in the tomb. The man at the pool of Bethesda suffered for 38 years before he was healed. Joshua and Caleb, we've been talking about the Israelites. We've been talking about them coming out of Egypt. Do you know that there was only two of the original group that made it in to the promised land? That was Joshua and Caleb. They had to wait 40 years until everybody else died off before they entered in. These are examples of, of people who had to wait in the Bible. So if you're waiting on God for something, then let me tell you something. You're in good company. Amen. And as I was reflecting on each of these stories, just going through my mind about the different uh, characters in the Bible who had to wait on the Lord, whether it's days, weeks, months, or years, there is something that God reminded me of as I looked at each of their stories. There's something that God pointed out to me of each of the stories that I just said to mention to you, and it was this. It came to pass. Whatever they was waiting on, whatever they were praying for, whatever they were uh, going before the Lord, it did come to pass. It might not have come when they wanted it to. It might have been four days late, late with Martha and Mary, amen. But it came to pass. Jesus showed up. Yeah. And so what I want to share with you tonight and remind you of this, and, and God was just speaking to me personally, maybe it's something in my very own life. He reminded me that He is faithful and it will come to pass. He will show up, amen. 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 And so if you're waiting on the Lord tonight, don't let me tell you something. He's not absent. He's not asleep. He's not on vacation. He's there. He's in the midst of, of whatever is going on in your life. And my message to you tonight is very simple. Keep the faith. Will you say that with me? Keep the faith. Come on and say it like you mean it. Amen. Keep the faith. Because when we wait, and we're waiting on God, we're waiting on something to change, waiting on a, a healing, waiting on a breakthrough, waiting on a change. How many of you know that our hope and our faith can begin to diminish? Amen. It can begin to, we can begin to start to become hopeless, we feel like. Pessimism, and it begins to come, oh, this is never going to happen, never going to change. This is never going to happen. No matter how long you have to wait, let me encourage you, don't give up. Don't stop believing that God is able. Never stop believing that God is faithful. Never stop believing that this too will come to pass or this too shall pass. Keep the faith. Listen to write this down in the blackboard of your mind. The pain and frustration of waiting is not new, but neither is the comfort and love God lavishes on us. I said, the pain and frustration of waiting is not new. There's many examples of, of those in the Bible that had to wait, and they agonized, and they made mistakes while they waited. They were frustrated, but neither is the comfort and love God lavishes on us. Even in the midst of that waiting, even in the midst of prolonged suffering, waiting on a door. God still has grace while you're waiting. Amen. God still has grace for you. And he has love and comfort for us in the midst of our waiting. As we wait upon God, even though our faith can dwindle, God still has got comfort for us in the midst of those seasons in life. 
So how do you keep the faith? How, how do we keep our faith as we're waiting on the Lord? I want to share with you just a few points tonight. I'm not going to be long. Number one is this. And there's many things that I could say here tonight, but I'm going to share you with you what God gave me. Number one is this. Know that God hears you. Know that God hears you. Have you ever been talking to someone and they weren't listening to you? What? I feel like that every Sunday morning. I don't know why. Wives, have you ever been talking to your husband and he was going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh? You know he zoned out a long time ago, didn't he? Ever get frustrated when you're trying to talk to somebody and they aren't listening when you're talking to your children, you're talking to your husband or your wife, or you're talking to somebody and it seems that they just won't listen and you get frustrated, amen? How much more frustrating is it when we think God isn't listening to us? Anybody ever get frustrated with the Lord say, Lord, are you even listening to me? Do you even hear me? Do you even know what's going on in my life? If you haven't been there, just hold on, okay? Because I promise you, go through that season uh, and there, it's just quiet. To, there's a time where the Lord does not speak, amen? And you're like, God, are you listening? Do you even hear me? Do you not hear what I've been praying and pleading for? When it feels like your prayers don't even reach the ceiling. Seems like God doesn't even care. I got a word, it's a very simple word of encouragement to you. Child of God, listen to me. God hears you. Yes. God hears you. He yes. God hears you. Go on and hit your neighbor right now and say, God hears you. God hears you. Why not? How can I say that about a child of God? This is how I can say it. Micah 7, 7 says this. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the Lord, the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Amen. Come on, y'all do better than that tonight. Amen. Let's say that last part right there. My God will hear me. Come on, say it again. My God will hear me. That ain't coming from my book. That's coming from the Lord's book. Amen. That's coming from the Word of God. He says, my God will hear me. And sometimes we doubt that the Lord is even hearing our prayer simply because He is silent. It does not mean that God is deaf, but it means you just have to wait. Amen. Romans 8.32 says this. He who did not spare his own son. He said, Paul said, he who even sent his only begotten son to die for us. To deliver, he was delivered him up for us all. How shall he not to, with him also freely give us all things? Is he saying there, well, he's just going to give us everything that we just asked for like a genie? No, that's not what he is saying unto us tonight. But what Paul is declaring, if God was willing to send his son Jesus to die for our very soul, will he not also through Christ give us everything else that we need in our life? I shared this with you this morning and I'll share it again. The cross is a guarantee that God is for us and He is fully committed to us as His children. Amen? Amen. I said He's fully committed to us as His children. Amen. If you are saved by the blood of the Lamb, you are a child of God tonight. Right. Woo! I thank God my mom and my daddy always take care, took care of me. If I needed something, guess what? I could go to them and they could do their very best to help me with whatever I needed. But you know what? I got a heavenly father yeah. that I can go to. And any time, Brother George, he's my heavenly father, amen, and I can call on him and I can ask him for the needs of, in my life and even the desires of my heart. And because the promises in Christ are yes and amen, he'll meet those needs, amen. 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 Know that the Lord hears you and that cross is a guarantee that God is for you tonight. He's not against you. He's not trying to harm you. But he hears you. And he loves you. If God did this, will he not take care of us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let that cross remind you of the sacrifice Jesus has already paid for you. What a price he gave for us. 
Boy, in that case, and we think about it like that, you know what? That ought to give us some contentment and we can wait patiently for our answers. I want to say that because of what I just said. Let this fact encourage your prayer life and not suppress it or diminish it. Listen to what Colossians 4 says. It says, continue earnestly in prayer. Maybe there's somebody in here tonight that's just about to give up on prayer. He said, well, God ain't listening no way. God ain't hearing my prayer. Nothing's happening. What did Paul say? Continue earnestly, sincerely in prayer, being diligent in it with thanksgiving. Make sure that your prayer has not turned into some rampant complaining list when you go before God. He reminds us, Paul reminds us in scriptures over and over and over again that when you pray, make sure that you've got thanksgiving tied into it. Don't be that nagging, don't be that nagging child, amen, that's ungrateful and never has a word of thanks. But it's always just, won't, 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 thank you, Lord. Don't you dare give up on your prayer life. Oftentimes when we're waiting on the Lord, we can be tempted to stop praying. We can be tempted to stop expecting Him to move. And we can give way to that old spirit of pessimism, negativity, doubt. But instead, we need to make sure we're always thankful because God is always listening. God is always behind the scenes working it out and God does hear us and while God may not answer in our timing or the way that we expect, He will always accomplish His good purposes in our lives when we wait on Him and persevere in prayer. I said He will always accomplish His good purposes in our lives when we wait on Him and persevere in prayer. Number two, put your hope in his word. Yes, Lord. Put your hope in his word. I just told you that my God, according to Micah, my God will hear me. How do I know that? From the word of God. Amen. I also told you that God is for you and not against you. How do I know that? The word of God. Amen. Where does my hope come? Right here. Mm-hmm. Say, so where does my hope come? Right here. Right. Where does my hope come? Right here. Listen to what Psalms, the psalmist said in 130. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I do what? Hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. Where does my hope come? It comes from the word of God. How is it and why is it that I can hope in the word of God? Because the word of God is unshakable. The word of God will stand the test of time. Because Jesus himself said that this heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. The Word of God is a sure foundation. It is a rock, Jesus said, that can be relied on and is stand stand upon no matter the storm that we go through. Yes, Lord. You know what it seems to me as I was contemplating this? It seems to me that God allows us to experience disappointments, sorrows, difficulties, waiting in order to, to teach us that nothing else will truly satisfy and provide for us a firm foundation as the Word of God. Amen. Amen. How many of you know experience is a good teacher? Oh, yes. I said experience is a good teacher. I believe it's the best teacher. Yes. I was talking to somebody the other day, talking about, I believe it was nursing or something like that, about, or, or, or something, they went to school, all these things. He said, man, it sure didn't prepare me for what I had to do. <laughs> And I said, that's right, experiences. There's nothing like experience. You know what? There's a lot of scriptures that we read in the Word of God. You put this in your heart. David said, I I hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. But I believe God allows us to experience certain things, sorrows, difficulties, waiting. He allows us to walk through certain valleys. Why? To prove to us His Word is true. Right. To prove that His Word is true to us and we get to see it come to life as we're walking through that valley of the shadow of death. Amen. Experience is a good teacher and He will teach it to us. He'll allow us to experience things and that we'll get to a place that we can wait for the Lord because we know that no matter how dark the night may be, 
Oh, we know that joy will come in the morning. Mm -hmm. But if we never walked through a valley, if we never had to wait, if we never experienced the darkness of night, we would never experience the joy of the morning. I said, if you never were in the darkness of night, if you never was in that dark and lonely place, you would never know the true joy of the morning. Amen. Amen. God allows us to experience certain things to teach us truly that His Word is true. Hope in the Word of God. How and why else can we hope in the Word of God? Because there's not one false word upon its pages tonight. You know what this Bible also proves to me, has proven to me over the years? It shows me. I love reading Old Testament stories. It proves to me that God never stops working even though I cannot feel Him nor see Him. You ever thought about that? I love the stories of the Old Testament. And behind the scenes, you always see God working God moving. Even though that they could not understand, the characters could not understand what they were going through, all behind God was lining things up, Amen. setting things in motion, preparing them for the next phase in their life. Amen. This word proves to me that God is always working. Yes. God's always there. God is always moving. So let the word of God strengthen you and give you courage to keep fighting the good fight, uh, the fight of faith. Listen to this psalm right here. Just one, one that I really like. Listen to this. It says this. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I want to encourage you. Don't think. That it's over. Don't think that it's isn't going to pass. Don't think you're not going to come out on the other side of this. But believe. Keep the faith is what I'm saying. Amen. Keep the faith. In the land of the living. The goodness in the land of the Wait on the Lord. The psalmist says. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait I say. On the Lord. Number three. Be still. And choose patience. Be still. And choose patience. Have you ever watched someone when they were waiting? Have you ever noticed the longer that someone sits, the more that they fidget, mm -hmm. they wiggle, they become irritable and make noises such as... <clears throat> <laughs> they turn this way in the chair. Turn this way in the chair. They're constantly watching their clock. I get to witness this every Sunday morning also. <laughs> they're fretting. They're growling. They're blowing, puffing and huffing. But in all of this fretting, as they're sitting there waiting and they're wiggling in their chair, does it actually make the time go faster? No. no. All it does is give you high blood pressure and a headache. Listen to what the Psalms 37 says. It says this, rest in the Lord. Say that with me. Rest in the Lord. Do you know what I think about when I think of the word rest? Laying things down. Laying things down. Stopping for just a moment and resting in the Lord. Sometimes we allow ourselves and our minds to run, run. We might be at a stopping place. But do you ever notice right here that if this mind does not rest in the Lord, that it'll wear you out faster than work will any day of the week? Amen. And some of you right now have got to allow your minds and your thoughts and your burdens to rest upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I encourage you right now, if you're dealing with some things in your heart and your mind tonight that are running rampant, that keep you up at night, I want to encourage you tonight before you leave this, this church, Come to this altar and say, Lord, I want rest from my mind. I want rest from my heart tonight. And all these worries and all this thing I'm waiting on, God, I'm going to give it to you tonight, Lord, and I'm asking you to carry it and to give me rest. Yeah. Did he not say, come to me? If you desired rest, did he not say, come to me? And that he would provide it, amen? And so I encourage you to rest in the Lord tonight. And there's some things you might need to lay down. But he says this, rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Do not fret. Because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. 
Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. He says, rest in the Lord. Lay that burden and that worry down at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, will you take care of this for me? I'm going to give this to you. It's your problem anyway. I'm your child. The cross declares to me that you are for me. You're not against me. That you are fully committed to me as, my, as a child of God. I know that you love me. And I know you're going to take care of this. You're going to see me through. And therefore, I'm going to rest in your word and then rest in your promises. Listen to what Proverbs 3, 5 says. You know this well. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. But I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Would you say that you are trusting in the Lord with all of your heart? Would you say tonight that you are trusting in the Lord with all of your heart? And let me ask you another question. Do you believe that actions speak louder than words? Then let me ask you this last question. Are your actions reflecting your trust? It's easy to say, well, I trust the Lord with all of my heart. But how do you respond to delays and frustrations and difficult situations of, that exposes? Or you may be really putting your trust. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Lean not on your own understanding and also, also do your best to lay that at the foot of Jesus. Don't fret, he says. I didn't say that. I didn't say I tell you that the Lord did, the, the Word of God did. When we fret, when we blow up in anger, it only causes harm. It doesn't benefit us. Let me remind you, to stop fretting, cease from those angry outbursts. Rest in the Lord. Wait on the promise of God instead of going your own way. Wait on the promises of God instead of going your own way. I can say that because I have done that before. Amen. And you know what I have found also in the Word of God for everyone of the characters of the Bible that did not wait on the Lord do you know what I found out? It always cost them. Amen. I said all the characters in the Bible, we, we're not going to go through them tonight, but those that did not wait patiently on the Lord, and they did, decided to go their own way, well, this is what we're going to do. It always cost them something. And I encourage you from the Word of God to wait patiently on the Lord. You know what I, I used to say, I had that old saying before, I always tell you, you know, when God closes a window or cl God closes a door, he always opens another door, but it's hell in the hallway. <laughs> you ever heard that old saying? Amen. When we're waiting on God to open up another door, listen to me right now. Be careful to wait on God as your doorkeeper to open the door and don't kick down doors. Amen. Amen. Be patient and let it be God. And not you forcing your way through. Remember God's goodness is promised for those who wait patiently on the Lord. And maybe you're thinking, well, I just don't know if God can do this. I just don't know. I'm beginning to lose my faith. I want to remind you what Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. In other words, what I'm saying, Jesus asked them, those two blind men, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Amen. And let me remind you tonight, if you've been waiting and waiting and waiting on the Lord to move in your situation, and your, have, your doubts have come in, your fears have come in, your faith has begun to diminish, let me remind you that God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or you can think. He is still able... So keep the faith. Keep the faith. Come on, say that with me. Keep, keep the, the faith. faith. Say it like you mean it. Keep, keep the, the faith. faith. Number four, and lastly, remember <coughs> blessings are yet to come. Amen. Blessings are yet to come. You probably are familiar with the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. Remember the Beatitudes? Blessed is this, blessed is this, blessed is this. Did you know there's one also found in the book of Isaiah? Listen to this. 
Therefore the Lord will wait. Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. And it says, blessed are those who wait for him. <clears throat> blessed, blessed we say, are those who wait upon the Lord. Blessed are those that wait upon the Lord by waiting. Do you know what? Sometimes we think that because we're not moving or something's not happening that we may come out behind. But I have found that when you wait upon the Lord, you actually will come out ahead. Amen. Amen. God has a way to catapult you into your future and catapult you right where you need to be. God can take things that it would have taken us in our own strength and taken us years to do. God can make it happen just like that. But if we will wait upon him and be patient for him, do you know what I've seen? God open up doors that move you from one place to the next in just an instant. Wait upon the Lord. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. Sometimes we think we need to do it the world's way to get ahead. But if we'll wait upon God, He can catapult us into our destiny. We are blessed by waiting. Blessed by waiting. Do you know that's twofold? Blessed by waiting. What do you mean, Pastor? That is twofold. Not only when you wait upon the Lord... Not only do you receive the blessing when it finally comes to pass, but you know what I have found out? The blessing in waiting is this. Along the way, you will pick up certain things as you go. What do you mean by that? I find patience. I find courage. I find strength. I find a discipline. I find things along the way that I didn't have when I started. Anybody yeah. see where I'm coming from? Yeah. There's a twofold blessing in waiting. Yes, it will come to pass as I open this sermon up. God will bring it to pass. But as we wait along the way, we're going to learn better patience. We're going to learn to trust God more. We're going to learn our, to strengthen our faith. We're going to learn wisdom and maybe to have compassion on other people. Yeah. There will be so many things that we pick up along the way as we are waiting on God. I can tell you that instance. If you'll be coming on to the music, I'm almost done, sister. I can tell you that instance with pastoring. Five years ago when I first started pastoring or when it was youth pastoring, there would be certain things that would happen. And guess what would happen? I'd kill all the pieces. And I had to go through those seasons of difficulty and learning. But now, some of those same things can happen. We can, I can face those same challenges. Yes, Lord. But I have a calm spirit. Yeah. Yes, I have courage. Why? Because I remember God already brought me through that one time. Right. God was already faithful in a situation very similar. And he brought me through. He was faithful and it worked out and everything was okay. And so as I pastor and other challenges arise in leading this church, I'm always reminded of the things that I picked up along the way as I was waiting on the Lord to open up doors in previous situations. That's growing in the Lord. That's a part of waiting. It's that you'll grow in the Lord. Amen. Will you stand to your feet all over the house? Keep the faith. Will you say that with me one more time? Keep the faith. Rest. Rest knowing He has heard your plea. And He heard it the first time. Trust God and His Word. Be still and let God be God. You hear that? Be still and let God be God. You are fretting and struggling over that situation. And instead, you need to say, God, I surrender this to you. I am yours. This situation is yours. My future is yours. I'm going to leave it up to you. Rest and let God be God. 
Let be God. Let God be God over your finances. Let God be God over your marriage. Let God be God over your future. And stop fretting so much. And lastly, remember blessings are yet to come. Amen. Blessings are yet to come. The story's not over. I said the story's not over. There's better things in your future. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe that tonight. Amen. It's been good. I used to always reminisce about high school. That was good. And this, all these things. But you know what? I believe I got the best living ahead of me. Amen. Yeah. As we close, I invite you this, this evening. If there's something you're fretting over, if there is something that you are just toiling and struggling with, would you come tonight and get rest? Would you come tonight and say, Lord, this is yours. You're, you're in the midst of this. I know you're working behind the scenes in, in my marriage or in my job or my career. God, I'm going to stop fretting about this. I'm praying to you about it. I, I'm, I am your child. I know you love me. I know you're going to work all things for my good and for your glory. You're going to take care of it. And God, I just need rest right now in this situation. If that's speaking to your heart, amen, would you come to the altar as we sing? Go ahead, brother. As we sing tonight, the altar is